Good afternoon. Uh, this is the continuation, the final instalment of the Outing the Past 2022 festival as hosted by the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust. The theme is Art in Politics. We have two British Sign Language interpreters in our midst today, Claire Edwards and Natasha Tantum. Um, if you'd like BSL interpretation, please let us know in the chat box. We can then make you co-host so you can multi-pin the speaker and the interpreter at the same time. And in order to make everything smoother and easier overall for everybody, please would all participants turn off their cameras and microphones. This makes it easier for those who do need a signer to see both the speaker and the interpreter. Our final speaker is Ben Spiller, the artistic director of 1623, a theatre company of marginalised people who work creatively for social justice with communities and Shakespeare. 1623 is based in Derby, Gateshead and London. They work locally, regionally, nationally and internationally. In fact, members of the company today have gathered from Derby, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Birmingham, Barbados and New York. Upcoming current and recent projects include Angelica with Deaf Communities, Othello's Sister with Black Female Communities, Much Ado with Working Class Communities and What We Feel with Mental Health Communities. Ben's presentation is entitled Shake Up LGBT Plus Remix and is a pandemic response by queer artists to identity, social injustice and Shakespeare. Ben, over to you, please. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Hi, everyone, uh, and welcome to Shake Up LGBT Plus Remix. I um, hope you're doing OK and looking forward to our time together this afternoon. My name is Ben Spiller. Uh, sign name is Shakespeare or the letter B in front of the mouth and moving away from the mouth towards you. Pronouns they them. Olive skin, long brown hair, pink eyebrows, blue tash and beard, pink lipstick, blue top. My background is black with a frame made from the colours of the progressive LGBT plus flag. So that includes white, pink, light blue, brown, black, red, orange, yellow, green, dark blue and purple. There's a parallelogram in the top left corner and it has horizontal stripes in the colours of the rainbow. There's black text inside saying 1623 Theatre Company. It's my great pleasure to be introducing and hosting Shake Up LGBT Plus Remix for you this afternoon. Thank you for joining us for what promises to be a lovely event of creativity and conversation. Hope you're all doing okay and looking forward to it. This event is about 50 minutes long. It's taking place in a safe space. In other words, we are all in a supportive environment where we all treat each other with kindness and respect. So what's gonna happen? Well, I'm going to introduce you to four amazing videos created by a team of fantastic LGBT plus artists who are here with us today. After each video, you'll have a chance to ask the artist any questions you might have, or you can pop your question in the chat during or after the screening of the video. All four videos respond to personal experiences of social justice or injustice and Shakespeare. They shake up LGBT plus identity, life and art to create a unique menu of cocktails just for you. When you've watched all four videos and we've had our chats with the artists, you'll be invited to take part in a fun creative activity to start a conversation between all of us about Shakespeare 
and LGBT plus identity. The chats and the activity will be BSL interpreted. The videos will be captioned. Audio described versions of the videos will be available online after today's event at youtube.com slash 1623theatre. So with no more ado, let's get started. First up, we have a cheeky and moving video called Shakes Queer by A Dahlia Day. After the video, you'll get a chance to meet Adelia and share your comments and questions with her. You can share on camera or in the chat, whichever you prefer. So, let's watch Shakespeare by A Daily A Day. The complete works of William Shakespeare? Shakespeare plays jazz with the alphabet. He queers words and rhythms left, right and centre, presents girl as boy, as bull, as ass, as clumsy assassin, some of the funniest fools you will ever see. Shakespeare is wild! How he syncopates the sentences to get you in the mood. Romeo taught me to dance with the dactyls and hold strong spondy's close brush lips with a truth in my gut and a quivering hip. Shakespeare sings the blues down my vertebrae. The hooky trokey, the metaphoric jive, and that loathed beloved I am hogging centre stage like a diva, honestly. Echoing Juliet's famous opening speech, age 23, is the first time I remember feeling free. Shakespeare tells you when to breathe. Literally. They didn't teach us this at school, but there's a bunch of rules you can learn to make the text come alive. A shorthand for actors. Which words to stress? How many heartbeats in a sigh? They didn't teach us this at school. There, Shakespeare followed strict 4-4 four, four time. 1988 to 2003. Adelia aged 3 to 18. Turns out teachers couldn't say anything queer to me. Turns out they could have been sacked for asking to she or not to she. Turns out Mrs Bowman could have been arrested for saying not every couplet has to rhyme. Could Orsino be bi was Viola a man deep down? Just asking the questions would have been enough at the time. For me, acting is about saying things you never get to say. Getting to be someone who actually feels free. In 400 years' time, the things you consider normal today will seem as weird as can be. Yet, 400 years ago, someone else spoke these words, and they were as true for them as they are to me. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Adelia, for sharing your heartfelt poem there. Um, Adelia, would you like to join us um, to join the conversation? Hi there. Hello. How are you? I'm very well. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. It's good to see you and to, to see your, your work again there. Um, yeah, so that's just, awesome. <laughs> Does anybody have any anything they'd like to share with Adelia about the poem that you've just experienced there? Uh, any questions or, or, or comments? Um, you can pop them in the chat if you like, or um, you can use the emoji um, hand if you want to, uh, to raise your hand um, here in the Zoom room. So anything you want to ask or any comments you'd like to make um, about that poem, anything that really um, connected with you that you'd like to share um, there. So that's your thinking up of your questions and your comments. Adelia and I could maybe have a chat 
Yeah, I also thought, should I explain my vision, my image for people with less good, yes, uh, please. less seeing skills? Uh, so my, uh, uh, I am a tall, white, uh, trans woman with long, wavy, uh, brown hair that cascades into kind of blondness at the tips. I'm wearing a burgundy top and I'm sat in an Ibis budget hotel room in Birmingham. Uh, extra bit of info there, you wouldn't have been able to pick that up from the site alone. And I'm wearing gold wide glasses. Um, yeah. Great, thanks Adelia. Um, we have a question uh, or comment. Um, that was stunning. Um, this is from the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust. So this is, uh, that was stunning. You are clearly well versed in Shakespeare. Please tell us more about your journey with Shakespeare. Okay, cool. So I, um, hmm. So I'm a poet as well. Obviously, I've just made a poem. Oh, foolish. And I, um, I used, I did Shakespeare at school and I didn't gel with it that much. And I was just like, I, would, I didn't gel with poetry as well. I used to like writing poetry, but not gel with it. And then I read, um, the oh an actor as well and then i read it says that in the poem you know this stuff so then i read um the ode less traveled by stephen fry which is this really good book all about um verse and structure and all those things uh, and it's really interesting the way he talks about all these different uh like forms like iams and dactyls and all these sorts of things and when i read that book it made me revisit the shakespeare and go oh now there's all this stuff to geek over, all the rhythms and things. Uh, and then around that time, I was at drama school as well, and we had, you know, less classes and stuff, and they taught us all these, like, the rules about the Shakespeare stuff. And it just, I found it so wonderful. Um, and, I mean, different directors work in different ways, but I always like to scan through the text and figure out those things and then, you know, add them into my character. So, yeah, so that was, like, drama school. And then I... Um, when I graduated, I did lots of open air touring Shakespeare shows. I did Richard III um, playing Clarence who gets drowned in a vat of wine. And uh, I did, oh, I ended up performing with Red Rose Chain who are based in Suffolk. I did loads of shows with them. Like Midsummer Night's Dream and Twelfth Night and King Lear and The Tempest and Richard III again, in fact. Um, so yes, it, I mean, I've been acting for like 15 years and done loads of Shakespeare plays in that time and oh, I just love it so much um, and then also like I wasn't always as confident the yeah, out was trans and sorry you're getting life story now but uh, I wasn't as, always as confident the yeah, out was trans but I came out I was working with Red Rose Chain doing loads of Shakespeare's then I didn't work for them for a while and I was doing other stuff and then we just happened to get in touch and they were like, hey, do you want to be in another show? And I was like, yeah, and we chatted and stuff. And then I was like, look, I've got to be honest, I'm trans. And it was early with me coming out as being trans. And they were like, that's cool. We're, we're totally cool. That I was like, oh my God, that's so good. Because you, know, you worry about work and stuff. And then a week later, they said, oh, we're doing a production of Richard III. Do you want to play Queen Elizabeth? So I was like, ah, oh, this is so cool. Um... So that, and that just felt so good. And yeah, and, and then since then I've done other things and stuff, but um, yeah, these are pivotal parts of my LGBT and Shakespeare journeys. Great, fantastic. So lots of different experiences with Shakespeare there. Um, and uh, Sam's got a question um, about that. Uh, do you connect with any Shakespeare character in particular? Um, yeah, loads of characters. Um, I, well, I did with, with the 1623, I did the, oh, is it Safe Space then? Is that what yeah, well, it was called Safe Space and then we changed it to What We Feel. What We Feel, yes. That's why I was confused, the names. So, uh, I did that and there I connected with Juliet and I'd always been like, you know, it's one of those things, Juliet. And then you're like, I realised I had so much baggage being a trans woman about, you know, like, oh, I can't say I, I connect with Juliet because that's the cliche thing. And oh, I don't know if you know, but like as a trans person, lots of people are like, uh, you better not be sticking to the cliches. You better not go anywhere near the cliches. Otherwise we'll think everything you're doing is a weird performance and untrue. So there's so much baggage about that. But then I explored Juliet in that 
thing. And even though I, d I don't connect to her circumstances as like a teenage, like reckless lover person, there was so much about this excitement of her and the jubilation of her love that I totally connected to. And I found that really wonderful. Um, also, Hamlet, who, I don't know, he's a pretty queer character. Uh, I made a show, um, Super Hamlet 64, which is a video game. It's like Hamlet with video games connected together. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, and I made it and I made... So I originally thought Ophelia was like, not given a good enough run of the, you know, grasp of things in the show, like sideline and stuff. And I gave, made her the hero of the beast. And then Hamlet was like this entire guy who's just like, oh God, everything's rubbish. Um, but through making that, I found the nuance of both those two characters. And then I, I, it's a complicated thing, but um, yeah. Yeah, we, um, we, have a, we have another question. Um, this is from Beth at Maison Food Theatre Company. Um, and Beth uh, says, uh, loved the thoughts around how different it will be in 400 years time. Uh, that was an inspiring thing to think about. Where do you hope we are in 400 years time as a society? Okay, flying cars. Um, I think that's very important. Hoverboards. Hoverboards seem to be a possibility. Uh, space travel, living on Mars. Um, I think I would really love it if uh, society had built itself into a shape where people are like, it's just, I don't know, where people prioritize caring for one another over gain, like financial gain and stuff. And if, if like somehow it gets to that point and it just becomes normal, it gets to the point, maybe it's a cultural shift and it just gets to the point where people are like, <laughs> whoa, why would I prioritize myself over, over someone else? That's just completely foreign. That's ridiculous, you know? That would be great. That's what I hope the world becomes like. Uh, what I think the world is gonna become like is more of a kind of, Mad Max, Wasteland type vibe with gangs of people and maybe mutants and stuff, sort of full out um, fighting for resources. <laughs> a lot more bleak, but you know, just. Yeah. You just conjured up some images in my head of uh, a production of Troilus and Cressida that the RFC did a few years ago that was <laughs> set in the future in a sort of a Mad Max kind of world. Um, there's some really, I think there's some. Um, clips of it and um, images of it online that if people want to have a look at that uh, and it, uh, and it, a vision of the future that's sort of similar to what you were talking about there um, and Shakespeare Birthplace Trust uh, question is your work published or is it mainly expressed through performance? So my work is mainly expressed through, through performance but I do have published things as well uh, I've got a book for Super Hamlet 64, which is all the poetry in there. And it's got QR codes that you can scan so you can watch me perform. Uh, and I've also got a book of Too Pretty to Punch, which is the show I'm currently touring, uh, which in fact, I've got my last performance of it after four years of touring in Luton on the 25th of Feb. So that's a book of poetry and illustrations and stuff um, for that one. These are available on uh, Gumroad, www.gumroad.com slash a daily a day if you're interested. Um, thanks, thanks Adelia. And if anybody wants to watch Adelia in the mini series, What We Feel, where Adelia um, plays a character called Laura who uh, explores her relationship with Juliet, um, that's on the 1623 YouTube channel there, if you wanna have a look at that um, at some point. Thank you so much, Adelia. Um, some really inspiring answers there. I'm sure that um, everyone's really enjoying listening to you and uh, engaging with your, your thoughts and your, your visions of, um, of what the world can be like and should be like. Um, wonderful, thank you so much. Um, we'll, and we'll, we'll, all, we'll all join back together again towards the end of, uh, of, of, of today. Um, thank you so much. Um, so we'll, we'll move now to um, our second um, video, um, which is by uh, an artist called Karen Spicer, and this video is called Shakespeare on Shelford Road.
how do I, this 59 year old woman born and brought up on Shelford Road, spit from Gedlin Pit, how do I love or even begin to relate to thee? The complete works. I pick it up, I have a look. Um, well, at first glance, well, it, it seems to me that you seem to see women as witches, manipulators, shrews, to be tamed, or, if like me, not from the upper classes, unnamed, tricky, hard to love thee with mine eyes at first glance. I think I need to away, give some other voices their say. My mum's friend, Cassandra, flamboyant, intelligent, 75, says, well, that way you're supposed to see it, what is it? Um, oh, I am a bit pentameter, that's it. Well, they never thought it was for us, so they never taught us, so I'll never speak it, I can't get the beat of it, that language. Not for me. But then my mum says, no. When he wrote what he wrote, it wasn't just for the upper echelons. The people in the pit, they loved it. No, I wasn't taught it, so I learnt it from LPs, borrowed and bought from the local library. I listened and I loved it. And when it came on the TV, I watched it. And when those actors who understood it, just said it, didn't proclaim it, then I knew it. I owned it. And yes, I love to say it out loud, you see, because it's poetry. It's poetry. Then my mate Judith says, yes, say it, yes, question it, but no, don't let the posh hijack it. Look at Leah, it's life, it's love, it's family, it's fathers, it's sisters, it's daughters, it's truth, it's untruth, it's madness, it's a family torn apart. And we all know something, if not all of that, don't we? And then it makes me think of the miners strike. So many families all alike in dignity, torn apart by a ruler with no idea, no heart. And then from downstairs again, I hear and I see the poetry, the poetry. Fear no more the heat of the sun, nor the furious winter's rages. Thou thy worldly task hast done, home art gone, and taken thy wages. Golden lads and girls all must, as chimney sweepers, come to dust. Oh, lovely. Thank you, Spicer. Spicer, are you there? Would you like to put your cap? There you are. Wonderful. Lovely to see you. Yeah, thanks for sharing your fantastic poem there. So heartfelt and, 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 and political and has really got something to say there. Yeah, yeah. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for having me. It's a, a real pleasure to be here. I'll very quickly describe myself. I'm now a 60 year old white woman with um, short curly grey. I'm wearing uh, brown glasses and a dark uh, green top. I'm in digs in Newcastle. So um, it's white walls behind me. I'm known as Spicer and my sign name, I have a sign name, which is if you put your two fists together and then put up your two little fingers and then you link your little fingers to form the S in BSL and then you let go and with your right hand you imagine that you're sprinkling a little bit of spice everywhere. <laughs> that is my sign name given to me by Jenny Seeley, the Artistic Director of Grey Eye. Um, and it's just a real joy to be here. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. It's great, great that you're here. Um, questions are coming through and comments are coming through, Spice, about your about your wonderful poem. Um, from the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust, we have a question. Uh, please would you tell us a little... Uh, 
uh, uh, you just froze them, Ben. I lost connection. Hi, Ben. I just I didn't get that, my lovely. I I think you froze. Oh, oh. I froze. Oh, I've, I, am I unfrozen? You are. You're very warm. Now. You're long oh, frozen. wonderful warming up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we've got to, we've got a question from Shakespeare Birthplace Trust um, asking um, uh, asking if you could just uh, share a little bit about um, uh, your choice to include the reading from Cymbeline at the end of the video um, that your mum does at the end of the video. Yeah, well, that choice was my mum's. So, uh, what was amazing for me, my mum brought me up uh, practically on her own on, on Shelford Road, as you know, and. My mum, when she was younger, she didn't have the opportunities to um, to be to come to Shakespeare, but she just always loved Shakespeare. And, and I said to her one day, in fact, when she was um, in her midlife, when she was around forties, uh, she decided she was going to do literature, A level literature, and she just did it. She just kind of like did it at night school and stuff. And that's when she started, she did Romeo and Juliet, and that's when she first started to go to the public library and get the records, get, you know, kind of, and she started bringing the records into the house. And I love that 1960s record, which is the one that I'm holding that was my mom's. And, and the reason I didn't choose that, mum chose that, and that was really important because I sat with mum and I said, "Well, darling, what, what is it? What, how did you, what, what did you connect with Shakespeare?" And she's the one that said, "Well, it's the poetry, I, and, and all I can do is read it out loud." And and she, she you know, she used to belong to things like the Cognitive Arts Centre, and she sang and all of that. She was in choirs, and she just saw the beats. She just learnt it, and so it wasn't my choice it was hers and that felt really important and it felt very important for me that my mum ended that I, I, it's very moving for me as well to have my mum um in something so yeah I, I love I love your mum's choice there of that because it, it really is about leveling us all out isn't it that yeah. you know we end of the day. Yeah, yeah yeah we're all we're all gonna end up in the same place aren't we you know we're all gonna be dust um so you know we're all we're all heading towards a similar kind of thing um so none of us is more important than anyone else um which i think really feeds into the politics of what you're talking about you know that so many families are like in dignity um in in your hometown in gedlin yeah yeah uh, yeah did you want to talk a bit about about that what um Kind of what made you think about that moment from uh, was, was um it suddenly kept me when judith when my friend judith was saying well look at leah and, and look at leah as a family and, and that everything in a family happens you know we all understand most of us understand when families are torn apart and when things happen and then the torn apart made me really flush back to the miners strike now i wasn't in nottingham then i'd moved away but oh my gosh it had such a massive effect i mean um at, you know getting comprehensive school that i went to school the pit was behind the school and most of most of the young people in their parents were dads were down the pit and you know the lads were supposed to go to the pit the girls were supposed to either marry a minor no, or go to, you know, what's the batteries and things like that. So the torn apart came because in the miners' strike, what happened in Nottingham was that some of the um, miners decided to go with a different union. And so there was a big split, and but it split families apart, which is something that hasn't been talked about a lot either. It was huge. Um, there were lots of people in Nottingham that were, um, you know, there, really with the miners strike and going out and then there were other people in Nottingham other unions that that wanted to keep their jobs and people were very frightened that on the pit estate that if they lost the colliery which they have now okay uh no I meant to ask they would their homes they were, their livelihoods and they're being torn apart and so that's why it came to there really that's that's why that happened that it, it just came to me that oh my gosh this is like that family's being torn apart and they're all alike and we're all alike in dignity but you don't dignity a lot of working class people isn't spoken about 
Mm. Yeah, it's just making me think about um, Romeo and Juliet um, oh. in the world of um, 1980s um, Nottinghamshire. You know, that there's something there, isn't there, of where is, where, you know, the, the reasons for the feud you know, between the two families. Maybe there's something that could be brought together, you know, from from your experience, your family's experience, and in ways of telling the story of Romeo and Juliet, um, where Shakespeare can sometimes be used as kind of a safety framework to really explore some really difficult emotional uh, and political um, ideas. Yeah. Um, so if we just get a little bit too close to the bone, we can always fall back on the safety net of Shakespeare um, as a storyteller. Yeah. Thank you. We've, yes, we've got some lovely comments, uh, Spice, um, uh, coming through on the chat. So Adelia, that was so fab, Karen. Um, Sam Beckett Jr. Um, has sent a, a clapping emoji. Uh, Bethany Sheldon from Maison Fu, stunning Karen, really moving. Um, uh, we've got from Sarah Johnson. Thank you so much, Karen. It was just wonderful and full of the very essence of you glorious a strong family connection for you uh, mary mcnally yes very moving and great that she could use the public library yeah, yeah. they're getting fewer and far between aren't they um and mark h says i love that you take ownership for all of us of something that was probably written for the higher society was it deliberate or just a reflection of everyone's love of shakespeare it was absolutely deliberate for me because I, I've gone on a real, I couldn't find, I mean, for me, Shakespeare was something that wasn't for me. It was for someone else. You know, it wasn't, um, we, I don't think it was, I don't, I can't remember it being taught. I mean, I was at um, Gedron Comprehensive in the 70s, you know, uh, so it, Shakespeare wasn't for us in lots of ways. And it was felt it wasn't for us. And, you know, when you, when you read, read the characters, I, which is what I was saying at the beginning, you know, when I picked it up, I'll have a look and, oh, hang on a minute. I mean, you know, particularly as a woman, you know, I go, oh, hang on, shrews or witches or, you know, and, and so that was, it was a really interesting um, thing for me to have to bang up against. But I like that. I, I like when, when you bang up against stuff. Um, and it was mum, again, it was mum who said, just remember that it was actually the people that really loved it were the audience in the pit, the ones that were right there, right there. There was a real, I mean, we mustn't forget that. And that sometimes I think that it can feel um, that the, the Royal Shakespeare Company is for the oppressed ones, not us. And mum will say that. That, that's not true it's it, you know that and I'm really interested in those characters I'm interested in the nameless characters because I think being nameless is something that we have been fighting for years and years and years all of us who are marginalized in whatever way is being nameless and it interests me that there are some characters in Shakespeare like when we were looking at Angelica the nurse is just the nurse that's her job the nurse and I'm just I, I'm the great digger. Uh, so, and I just find that really interesting. And I'm, I'm interested in how we find people's names. Mm. So, so Spice, um, uh -huh. as an LGBT plus artist, um, where are you at with Shakespeare now? Um, um, I think I'll always have a bit of a battle and that is, but I like that. I think, you know, and, and what I've been with your support and with 1623, I've been really fascinated in the work that we did with the R&D on Angelica when we've been looking at the nurse and giving the nurse a name, Angelica, and also looking at, at that person who, and going, well, what if, in fact, Caro, you know, came up in improvisation with that, um, even though she was married, she'd been in love with Freya, well, Freya Lauren, Freya as a woman, and that's fantastic, those, those little things. Um, but I feel that I, that we, that I found those, or we found those, that we created those. Um, and I think, again, it's really interesting because I still come very much to 
Shakespeare with a little bit of a like, oh, I don't understand it, it's too hard. Um, but I just wrote down daily, thank you, I just wrote down uh, the, um, the book, the um, Stephen Fry book, because that would be really lovely to read and look at and, and get to it. And I think, yeah, it, it's interesting. I think that I, I can't, I don't see them straight away. The gay characters but I think that is because I still struggle a bit with um with trying to understand the language and trying to understand where I connect with that language um but again as an artist I think you always have to engage and be interested by things that are not easy for you and that maybe you have felt is not for you and go through that little journey of what that is as well mm. um because of course that is your life as mm. someone from the LGBTQ community as well, is that you're continuously going through things, you know. And the way that Shakespeare has been packaged up over the last few hundred yeah. years um, by various different people, and there is so much queerness in Shakespeare's work, but just like with the Dahlia's piece, you know, in, in the 80s and the 90s when you were at school, um, that was never taught, and it was never a conversation that could happen because of section 28 um, and now we're at a point where we can start to really reconnect Shakespeare with LGBT plus identity um, we're at a point where we can do that more and more openly and freely and with more confidence and less fear. I think it's really exciting coming to things as an older woman you know, coming from, you know, my roots of kind of like all the fights I was involved in in the 80s and I was there at the, you know, Section 28 rallies, all of those, I was, you know, I was in that park when uh, suddenly somebody went on stage and said uh, that we've just been kettled by the police and uh, put your, so if you're holding a banner, put down and um, with um, because of the arrested, everybody in the park kissed everybody and held the posters even higher. You know, is what we did. Um, so going through, but going back to my time when I was at school, I mean, I was at school in the 70s, there wasn't even such a thing as a lesbian in Gedlin, let alone <laughs> what I was talking about. You know, it was a very, very different time. Um, mm. and, and it's fantastic that we've come this far. Yeah. Um, that we can start looking, you know, that we can start looking, that we can, we can start learning together and being together and going, this is all of us, this is our history together and we are stronger, you know, let's, let's also break down those, those age barriers between us and, and keep that communication and keep that strength and keep that understanding, I have got so much mm -hmm. to learn from the younger generation, so much, and, you know, if, if we all do that together, then, then we grow, you know, yeah, we, exactly. we grow across so yeah. And Mary McNally says in, in the chat, I wonder what the nurse would say to the grave digger, what, what the nameless characters would say to each other. And she's also said, yay, women of 60 plus, yay. Uh, so there we are, solidarity there. Um, thank you so much, Spider, for, for sharing your work and where you're at at the moment um, with Shakespeare. Thank you. Hopefully the journey will continue. Yes, I think so. Great, brilliant. And if anybody wants to look at um, the uh, Scratch performance, work in progress, that uh, Karen uh, directed in lockdown, it's on the 1623 YouTube channel, um, and the piece is called Angelica, which puts Juliet's nurse centre stage. Thank you, Spice, that's great. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to our next video. Um, uh, we're going to move on to um, a piece called Here, There which is inspired by uh, Romeo and Juliet and gives voice to Mercutio, uh, the dying Mercutio in the arms of Romeo. Um, and this is written by J.D. Stewart and performed by Ralph Adriel Johnson. Um, so let's take a look.
I am here, but also there. Now I see. Death is unplanned, and I wait. Wait to enter the immortal part where angels live, but not until I speak. Speak the words to you I did not. Speak the words left in that lifetime before the light breaks. Not through windows, but inside skin. I am here. But also there, I am fortune's fool to have my life end in your arms. I claimed a scratch, but it was a tear. Your hands will not let me go. My hands do not give life. They take it in your hands. My body is left. Violent delights finish with violent ends. And my soul, well, my soul is stuck. I did not live true. I did not live honest. But maybe if I had, there would be no tear. No scratch. I am here. But also there, I fell in time for you. I lived dishonest for you. But how did you not know? How did you not see the ancient grudge lodged inside my heart? Time plays on repeat. True moments must be dreams. And dreamers often lie. Not only to others, but to themselves. We are unsolvable pieces. But one thing remains true. I am here, but also there. No wings to take me, but use this if you still do not know. Still will not know. I love you, sweet Romeo. But there is no sound when doves cry. This world was not my friend, not yours, but that one, in that one, we could be. I am here, and you are there. Wow, wonderful work. I've seen that so many times and it always makes me cry. Um, JD, are you there? Ralph? Are you there? Would you like to join us? Hello. How are you both? I'm good. Um, I'm, I'm JD. I am a white man with brown hair, wearing glasses and a light pink sweater. Hey there. I am Ralph Johnson. I'm a brown man. Uh, I have a gold chain on, black, uh, black and Ooh. olive shirt floral patterns with a couch to the left of me and plants to the right of me and a big light in the background and a beige background. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, JD, um, yeah, where, where did it come from, this beautiful piece of writing? Well, where did it come from? Well, we had a wonderful chat and then after that, um, this was like way back in 2020 and I was standing in Sainsbury's where I worked during the pandemic um, and this sort of this line of I am here you are there came to me and so it was like out of that that I was like that felt right at that particular moment in time and then I rewatched 
um, Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet and reread it and sort of wrote down key phrases which I thought were interesting or spoke to me in the text and I wrote them down and then I typed them up and I printed them out and I stuck them in my living room um, on a wall um, and I just sort of sat down one day and and pulled from that and 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 did it that way but yeah that's that's it really <laughs> and then I sent it to Ralph and um, and we talked about it for a long time. Um, I think it was about four or five hours initially. We sat on, on Zoom and spoke it through and, and talked about it. And yeah, and then we did the recording on New Year's Eve 2020. <laughs> Which I remember because I was looking at my calendar the other day about things that I like to look back at things. But yeah, I looked and I was like, there it is, 2020. Yeah. I could really, really see the influences from from the Baz Luhrmann film there, with the you know, the, the dove, the doves crying. Um, yeah, 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 wonderful. The way you sort of wove, wove the your own voice in with the lyrics of that song, and also with um, with with a bit of Shakespeare as well. Um, so why why Mercutio? I think Mercutio is. A very interesting character and he's one that sort of that sticks out for me purely from that version of Romeo and Juliet um, as as just being so like flamboyant you know and sort of alluring and charming and captivating to watch but also there's like something else there for me with him and I think that image of of him like dressed in drag at the party, you know, dancing to young hearts, what run free is my sort of Mercutio image. Um, but yeah, and it was like over the years, people like in discussing Shakespeare, I think people sort of would hint at or talk about that possible love that he had for, for Romeo, you know, that was more than, more than a friendship. Um, so I think that always stuck with me. Um, yeah. 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 yeah, and that there was that real sense of injustice in the piece as well about how Mercutio couldn't express how he felt about Romeo in the world of that particular play or, or that film or, or a mixture of the two. Um, we have a, a, a comment from Adelia um, uh, saying, so beautiful. Um, does anybody have any, if anybody has any questions or any comments? Um, oh, we've got one coming through uh, from the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust. Have you seen the National Theatre Romeo and Juliet film in which Mercutio and Benvolio are in love? Have you I, seen have, that one? I have not. I have not seen that. Ralph, did you see that? No, I haven't seen it. Interesting. Wow. Maybe I shall. Is that the Jesse Buckley one? Jesse Buckley. I think so. I think is that right? Um, I think I think that's the one. Um, if Shakespeare Birthplace Trust could. Oh yes, yes, they're saying yes in the chat and sent a link through as well. Wow. The National Theatre website. Um, no, I'll have to have a look at that. I'm going to save this thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Sam B has sent through lots of lots of red hearts, which is very. <laughs> very love, uh, lovely uh, response there. Um, so Ralph, did you want to share a little bit about uh, the process of making this video with JD? Yeah, I mean, uh, a large part of it wasn't uh, done without JD. I think um, for me, I, I, I don't have much uh, experience with Romeo and Juliet. I've been doing Shakespeare since I was maybe 18, so about 12, 13 years. Uh, and through that time, like, it's been a lot of time um, working on different plays. I've never done one of the plays twice. So I've done maybe like 14 or 15 different Shakespeare plays. And, and like Romeo and Juliet is one of the most popular Shakespeare plays, but I've never done it. So that means I've never like really, I probably read it once in college or in high school or something like that for school. But other than that, um, uh, it was a, a lot of fresh material for me. So uh, 
for me, I think uh, coming to it with JD and a lot of talking about circumstances and relationships and what was going on for the two people, they, they, they became, they were less so of these archetypical, like 500 year old characters and more so of just, the, they became very grounded people for me. Um, so it was almost as if like, you know, 30 minutes in the conversation or working on it, I'd have to be reminded that like, oh, this is Shakespeare. Like these are Shakespeare's characters and not um, another, you know, play that JD had, had written or uh, beautifully constructed. So um, yeah, it was just a lot of conversation. Like when we work together, it's more so conversation than working on um, the actual text, which is amazing to do. Um, and then after after all that work, just put it down and yeah, have fun with it. And record it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. How many times did you record it before you were happy with it? Um, I remember practicing it a lot. So recording it, uh, I didn't have too many flip ups. Uh, but I think I, I I sent JD maybe four recordings. You only sent me two. Two? Oh, okay. Then two. It was 2020. Remember? <laughs> so I sent them two. I think I did probably like seven or so, just of like differing, like um, uh, uh, different moments, uh, having them uh, be a little bit uh, different here or there, just rhythmically or even. Uh, uh, tonally or mood wise and mm. things like that um, but mm. the action and objective and everything like that stayed uh, pretty consistent um, mm. from what we were talking about um, yeah. the two of us I but, think yeah. something that, that really came across was this this you know the idea of the here and there but um, here is here is, is Mercutio um, dying and there is Romeo living and here is um, JD in one country and there is Ralph in another country. And you just have that real sense of um, like a distance between um, different worlds and um, the injustice of that and um, trying to overcome that barrier that's, that's been put there. Um, Mary McNally's put, um, are there other characters like Mercutio, Antonio? What, Mary, maybe you could give us a little bit more, uh, yeah, what, when you say characters like Mercutio and Antonio, what, what kind of characters are you thinking about there? Uh, maybe you could give us a little bit of a clue. Antonio um, from what? I just uh, unmuted myself. I just oh, wondered- Oh, hello, Mary. Oh, hi, hello. Anne. Um, I just wondered whether in terms of um, maybe there being some sort of LGBT subtext or, you know, that that's never really spoken about, or at least perhaps at that time wasn't, that we can now sort of draw particular characters out of the text. That's what I suppose, you know, I was just thinking, oh, you know, like almost like this idea of the unnamed, you know, what, what could we sort of do around that and, and who might other other characters be? With it in the text, and, and the first, the other one I thought was from uh, Merchant of Venice. Yeah. Oh, I see the merchant himself. Antonio. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So characters who are LGBT as we see them now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And maybe one way of looking at it is subtext, and um, another way of looking at it is it's it's kind of been subtext because it's been put upon us to make it subtext that it's yes. put under the text or beneath yeah. the text and you have to mm. dig for it whereas yeah it's actually very clear for some of like, with some of the characters that they belong to the lgbt plus community mm, yeah um, uh, and and also we can do all sorts of things with shakespeare's characters as well we can we can play around with lots of different aspects of, 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 of characteristics and personalities. Um, Mark H has shared with us, um, that spoke to me so much of my first ever love in the 70s. Oh, thanks, Mark. That's lovely. Um, is it so much easier now? 
Mm. <laughs> um, I mean, I'd like to, I'd love to say yes. Um, I think if you are living in a city and you sort of or have access to, to LGBTQ bars and you're able to do that, then I think, yes, maybe it can be better. But I think if you are in Syria, if you are in Chechnya, if you are in Russia, Dubai, I, I, I don't know if it's better, you know? I don't think it is. And I think that, I think from my viewpoint, and I'm speaking personally, like as someone who lives where we are and who's lucky to do that, I think, a lot of the time we sort of, we turn our, turn our gaze maybe away because it's not happening here. You know, it's happening there as the name of the thing is. Um, and, and it's not really until these things land on our doorsteps that we sort of perk up and, and, and maybe think, oh, hold on a second, maybe, maybe it could happen here, you know? And I think, I think our, our fight is obviously within our country and, and, and for our people and, and I think that we should always be looking to other places, you know, Poland is not that far away. Um, and, and with their LGBTQ no, no go zones and, you know, and these things like, um, these things aren't as far away as we think they are, you know. Um, but on a positive note, I believe like in the, with the younger generation who I see and my friends are teachers and they talk about them in school and like, and the language they're using and, and, you know, and, and my therapist mentions that he has, he has, and speaks to an 18 year old um, who is very confident, you know, and that's a wonderful thing. And I think that that's a great mm -hmm. thing um, for sure. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think it depends where you are, you know. Mm -hmm. Thank you, JD. Yeah, and Mary McNally shares well said. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so we uh, thank you so much for sharing your work and answering the questions and, no, your, right. and sharing your process. Uh, we're coming towards the end of our session now. Uh, we've got time just to share our final video um, by Sam Beckett Jr., um, who uh, has. Oh, hello, Paul. You popped up. Hello. <laughs> Or did you are you are you here to share something? No, oh, yeah, okay. Um, and um, the piece is called Samlet by Sam Beckett Jr. Father, the question is, to be or not to be, that whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer on earth as it is in heaven, puzzles the will. Thy name art in heaven, thy kingdom be hallowed. Come, thy will be done. Forgive us this day, forgive us our trespasses. Tis a consummation devout to be wished. We forgive those that trespass against us. The oppressor's wrong grunts and sweats, the laws delay whips and scorns, the insolence of office, a sea of troubles, the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to under a weary life. The slings and arrows take arms against this mortal coil with a bare body. Calamity, outrageous fortune. But what dreams may come? No more. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
bear those ills we have? For whose dainty bread to bear the end of the proud man's continent? The pangs of despised love and the spurns that patient merit makes of so long life? country after death, for in the sleep of death, to die, to sleep, and by a sleep, to say we end our power and glory forever and ever. To die, to sleep, or to sleep, perchance to dream. Fardels might make the rub of that. And there's the pause that makes no time traveler return but we have shuffled off when he himself who makes us rather bear his quietness and fly to others that we know not of is born thine must give us our kingdom by opposing them there's the respect bear that amen Wow, what a powerful piece of work um, from from Sam there. Um, Sam, are you are you able to join us? Um, and I know that Sam was having um, yes. There's a yeah connection. Wonderful. Hello, Sam. Thank you for joining us and for sharing your work. Um, how are things going with you? Oh, you are mute. Sorry, just to say, yep, I'm, uh, my name is Sam. I am a uh, gender fluid, mixed race, dark hair, blue um, vest top sitting in front of the, the Bayesian sea. So don't be too jealous, but <laughs> I'm very pleased to be here. And yeah, I'm, I'm glad that the, the video has been, has been given some audience. <laughs> Great, wonderful. Thank you, Sam. Uh, we have uh, a comment from uh, from Mary McNally um, in the in the chat. Very, very powerful, uh, especially with the images. Yeah, I wondered if you'd like to talk a bit about the the images and um, where 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 they where they came from and um, how you decided on how to bring it all together. Okay. okay. I've always felt there's been some tension between um, particularly the black community and the LGBTQ community in a similar way that I feel that there is tension between the black community maybe and Shakespeare. But um, I also note that the black community are happy to take on board biblical verse but are scared to dive into Shakespearean verse. Um, or prose, whatever. So I, I decided just to kind of mash the two things up in a sense that I wanted to explore the term to be or not to be as I, I um, experience it, which is to be the gender you're born as, not to be the gender you're born as, uh, to be lots and lots of different things. And so, um, yeah, the images came really from research that I did around Black and Latinx transgender people, particularly trans women, that are murdered um, just because they are trying to express a gender that that, that other feel, others feel offended by. And I, I can't understand why um, sometimes the Black community are so happy to accept biblical verse and um, you know, the words of, of the Bible, but at the same time commits the heinous crimes. Um, and it's a lot of it stems from my work around decolonization and, and how, you know, that work is, uh, is so difficult to unpick and, and how the black community were given this, um, this way of thinking by white, uh, you know, ministers um whatever 
but have taken it uh, slightly, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's something that I'm really interested in and my, my situation as a you know, member of the black community, a member of the LGBTQ community, a lover of Shakespeare, but still a person questioning so many things about gender and um, who I am and identity. And I, and I find so much comfort with, in Shakespeare and you know, have done since I was 15. So um, I just wanted to explore that and, and at the same time draw attention to the fact that, you know, transgender women and men are, are the most, one of the most marginalized communities in the world. And um, yeah, uh, you know, I think one of the, the quotes said 350 women, transgender women in a year in America, black women, you know, transgender women are murdered and there isn't the, uh, there isn't the outrage, you know, it's not the, we don't get the reaction that George Floyd did or other things. And I just think it needs, it needs highlighting and people need to talk about it so that we can change it. Mm, yeah. So how do you kind of see your, your video being part of that um, awareness raising and uh, bringing about change? Um, where does it kind of, how do you kind of feel that, that might fit with it or, or contribute towards that? I think drawing a spotlight to it, you know, putting it in the public domain is a political statement. And if it causes or if it results in one or two people being more aware and maybe taking some action, whether it be uh, the tiniest thing in the street where, you know, you don't sort of look away or um, judge a transgender person or to, to somebody writing to the, you know, MP or, and I grew up in the States, which is why a lot of that is America based in America, because I'm, you know, I, I grew up there and I feel as though in the States, there is a bigger rift in, uh, with the race, racism and the fact that black transgender lives are seen disposable um, and I think, you know, we need to draw attention to that and something needs to be done. I think all of us would agree with that, Sam. Thank you. Um, and thank mm -hmm. you for sharing such a powerful piece of work that comes from somewhere very personal for you and um, you know, it's full of integrity um, and honesty. Thank you for, for sharing you. with us today and your process. Um, we've now come to the end um, of Shake Up LGBT Plus Remix. Um, so I'd just like to thank Shakespeare Birthplace Trust for, for hosting us here at the Outing the Past Festival. And I'd like to now hand back over to Paul. Thank you so much. Ben, that was inspiring material from 1623 and your cast. Thank you to all of you who presented your work in that last session here at the Outing the Past Festival 2022. Um, struck by many things, especially struck by, for example, the reminder of how repressive Section 28 was and how we need to avoid anything like that again. Struck again too um, by how powerful Shakespeare's words can be used to speak directly to our own experiences, relationships, identities, culture, and also, I have in ringing in my ears something that Adalia said in response to the question about 400 years from now, about how it will feel odd if we prioritise ourselves over other people. That's an extraordinary observation and hope for the future. And surely it's very much in the spirit of Outing the Past Festival and all that you're doing, Ben, with 1623. So keep at it and thank you very much indeed. And a reminder to all of you that this session was recorded and will be available um, on the SBT's website. And that means that all of the videos that we've just been watching will, will get more audiences. So, so thank you and, and, and well done all of you. If you'd like to make a donation to the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust, please do so via our website, shakespeare.org.uk forward slash donate. And thank you to all of you for 
joining the Outing the Past Festival uh, with the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust. Uh, it's been a fantastic afternoon and I wish you all a very good rest of evening. So from everyone here in Stratford-upon-Avon and to all of you from various parts of the world, good evening and thank you.